Ms. Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, March 30th, 2025, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. We just got back to our Michigan studio from Las Vegas and the EV Charging Summit. At the show, we had the opportunity to produce videos with many electrification leaders. We'll get those edited and published this week, so be sure you're subscribed to the Ms. Go Electric industry channel in order to check those out. I'll link that channel below in the description. On to the news. Hyundai Motor Group has announced a $21 billion investment in the United States aimed at expanding its manufacturing footprint and advancing electric vehicle production. The investment, spanning from 2025 to 2028, allocates $9 billion to increase vehicle production capacity to 1.2 million units per year across all three brands, Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis. They will update their existing facilities, including the Hyundai Motor Manufacturing Alabama and Kia's Autoland Georgia plants as a part of this investment. In order to localize their supply chain, they will dedicate $6 billion to automotive components, including EV battery packs. Another $6 billion will be allocated to expand strategic partnerships with U.S. companies in areas including autonomous driving, robotics, AI, and advanced air mobility. You may already be familiar with some of those programs, such as their partnership with Waymo to supply autonomous driving vehicles, their purchase of Boston Dynamics for robotics, and their five-seater electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle under sub-brand Supernal. That aircraft is expected to start commercial service in 2028. As a part of the $6 billion, they will also invest in energy infrastructure projects like small modular reactor technology through their Hyundai Engineering and Construction Holtec International Partnership, as well as their ongoing investment into IANA, the EV charging cooperative network by eight automakers. The plan also includes a $5.8 billion steel plant in Louisiana, which is aimed to produce 2.7 million metric tons of steel annually for Hyundai's U.S. auto plants in Alabama and Georgia. The company also celebrated the grand opening of the Hyundai Motor Group Meta Plant America just outside of Savannah, Georgia, where they've been building the Ionic 5 and Ionic 9 since October, as we'd previously reported. The dedicated EV and hybrid assembly and battery plant will eventually build a Kia model for 2026 and future models for Genesis as well. The initial production capacity has been expected to hit 300,000 vehicles annually. The new investment has increased that projection to an eventual 500,000 units each year. Hyundai said the total investment is expected to create 14,000 new direct full-time jobs in the U.S. by 2028. The overall economic impact is expected to generate more than 100,000 direct and indirect job opportunities across related industries. If President Trump's latest 25% tariff for imported cars goes into effect on April 3rd as it's intended, Hyundai Motor Group will have reduced exposure to the extra cost as a result of these maneuvers. We will keep you posted when or how those tariffs go into effect later this week. Hyundai Motor Group sold over 7 million vehicles across their three brands globally in 2023, so this investment is going to impact about a quarter of their automotive sales. Back in 2022, Rivian CEO RJ Scaringe revealed the company would be working on more than just electric SUVs, trucks, and vans with the plans to develop varying micro-mobility products, including e-bikes. After several years in development by a team of some 70 employees, the company has chosen to spin off this micro-mobility division into a standalone company, which they have named also. The new company is backed by a $105 million investment from venture capital firm Eclipse Ventures. Rivian says they will retain a substantial minority ownership stake, while RJ Scaringe serves as chairman of the board. Eclipse Ventures also owns or has a stake in Arc Electric Boats and companies with raw materials access, including battery suppliers, Enovix, and Peak Energy. Former Chief Product and Technology Officer at Specialized Bikes, Chris Yu, has served as the VP of Future Programs at Rivian since 2022 and has been tapped as ALSO's president. 
Their first flagship product will launch in 2026 for the US and European markets, but the design will be revealed sometime at an event later this year. As for hints at what it could look like, in an interview with TechCrunch, RJ said, there's a seat, and there are two wheels, there's a screen, and there's a few computers and a battery. Eventually, they will plan to offer products for consumer and commercial use in Asia and South America as well. Importantly, also will leverage some of Rivian's technology and retail presence. When asked about pricing, RJ said, Remarkable that a nice e-bike costs as much as it does. Like a nice e-bike, you can spend $6,000 to $8,000 on, and really nice ones over $10,000. That's a reflection of a poorly developed supply chain that's very, very tiered. I have ridden and reviewed over 100 e-bikes and scooters in all categories and styles over at the Misco Electric Ride Reviews channel. I agree with RJ that brands including Specialized and Trek make nice bikes. Many premium bike shop brands lack features, technology, and range, and they generally do so with uncompetitive pricing. In my opinion, there are some very nice high torque, ultra fast, and high battery capacity electric mountain bikes available from direct to consumer brands at prices ranging from $2,000 to $3,000. I own a really nice full suspension carbon fiber Luna e-bike, which sells for about $4,000. Many of today's best direct-to-consumer e-bikes have app compatibility, 4G connectivity, anti-theft features, power profiles, customization, and even advanced navigation or voice control. I suspect RJ's comments about $6,000 being a low price offers an indication of Also's pricing range. I'm looking forward to learning more about the form factor and how Rivian design language and software expertise will benefit their products. It is true that the bicycle and e-bike supply chain has been centered around Taiwan and China for decades. A reshoring of the industry has been taking place, led in part by the team at Bloom. We visited them in their Detroit office recently and produced a detailed video about their progress so far. I'll link that video in the description below if you want to check that out. Rivian isn't the first automotive company to invest in smaller than a car e-mobility or micro-mobility solutions. Porsche has their own division called Porsche e-bike performance, which was purchased from Remat's sub-brand Grape. Brands like Ford, GMC, Jeep, Bugatti, and McLaren have licensed and white-labeled electric bikes and scooters to coordinate with their existing vehicles. VinFast, Honda, Toyota, and Volkswagen have made some interesting electric micro-mobility devices as well. Ford actually acquired their own electric kick scooter rideshare platform, Spin, back in 2018, but sold most of that in 2022 to Tier Mobility. If you've watched our show for some time, you know there are also a ton of car companies invested in other mobility and transportation options like eVTOLs, as well as Polestar has teamed up with electric boat manufacturer Candela. It makes sense for EV companies to electrify transportation by land, air, and sea. What do you think of Rivian's plans for other forms of transit and adventure? What kind of products would you like to see from also? GMC has expanded its all-electric Sierra EV lineup with the introduction of two new trim levels, called AT4 and Elevation. At $64,495, the Elevation trim level drops the price to a new baseline by nearly $28,000 compared to the previous lowest price trim, the Denali Extended Range, which began at $92,090. This new entry-level Sierra EV Elevation trim includes a dual-motor all-wheel drive system delivering up to 645 horsepower and a standard range battery with an estimated 280 miles of range. The standard battery is based on a 400 volt architecture, but can also be upgraded to an extended range battery option for an additional $8,200, which bumps up the range to approximately 390 miles and provides up to 300 kilowatts DC fast charging speeds. The new AT4 trim level starts at $79,300, and it offers some exclusive features, including GMC's terrain mode, off-roading hardware and software, a lifted coil suspension, providing two inches of additional ground clearance, 35-inch all-terrain tires, and a forest storm interior. Notably, the AT4 also comes equipped with standard rear-wheel steering, 
GM's hands-free driving assistance system, Super Cruise, and a head-up display. These new trim levels help position the Sierra EV as a more accessible option amongst its competition. The 2026 Sierra EV models are set to hit dealerships this summer. The competition is fierce in the full-size electric pickup space, but price is probably one of the most significant considerations at this point. It's great to see lower cost options introduced so more people can go electric. Which one do you think is the best option on the market right now? Well, that just about wraps up our episode for this week. Again, we are publishing all of our interviews and coverage from the EV Charging Summit and Expo this week, so be sure to subscribe at youtube.com slash at Industry. And don't forget to join me on X, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok for real-time updates and fun stories which might not fit into the current or on YouTube. Thank you all for joining me this week, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric. Thank you.